Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Insight Talk. So uh, today I've got Rebecca on and we're going to be covering a bit about student discipline and how people need to take personal responsibility for their own learning and uh, their peers learning too. So I'll, I'll pass you over to Rebecca to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a first year Bangor business student and I live on the island, so pretty close to Bangor. And I'm I enjoy the at-home learning, but there are quite a few weaknesses to it at the moment. Cool. Um, let, let's start there then. So we're both business school. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously postgraduate, your first year undergrad, undergraduate. For you, what are you finding is, um, is sort of like, is missing with the online learning side of things? There needs to be like more standards in like, registration codes need to be given at a set point in time. And there also needs to be a level of, if you are doing something like leaving your mic on so no one else can hear, or you're drawing on the slides, or there needs to be a level of, you need to be able to be held accountable for that. Because you couldn't get away with that in a face-to-face -face lecture, so why should you get away with it at home? Yeah, so, so just, just, just adding a little bit to that there. Um, essentially with uh, like our online courses now, um, you have attendance codes that get given in lectures, which, log your attendance with the university and um it's quite strange that we're having these issues still at the end of the semester but uh people just constantly spam the chat don't they rebecca like oh what's the yeah. attendance code what's the attendance code the lecturers will and say it can have been given out like two minutes earlier and yeah. you can still get the messages yeah yeah so we've had the same thing and it's really distracting um but one of the things that we've had is uh, one of my lecturers has said like for the past five, six weeks, you will get the attendance code at the end of the lecture. And he says this every lecture and we've still got people spamming the chat like constantly. Like I've got a code, lecturer. Please. Attendance code, please. And it's I've so- I've got a lecturer that's done it, that said, even at the beginning, she always gives it at the end. And she gets to the point when she sees it like more than five times, she'll go, as always, you'll be getting the lecture code at the end and it's for the benefit of you that you'll sit through the lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then you, you still get the messages, and it's really yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really frustrating because it's not only distracting for like other students, it's distracting for the lecturers because you can see them on the yeah. end of like the Zoom, just like looking at the because it pops up in the chat box, doesn't it? You can see them like yeah. looking at it. Um, yeah, I think the only because people can't get their heads around it, obviously at undergraduate and postgraduate level, the lecturers just need to ignore it. I think. Just like, there needs to be a level of ignoring it and there needs to be a set thing. It is given either at the beginning, the end, and that's it. It's uniform. Yeah, um, yeah. No matter if you go from, say, I do business analytics to core economics, it's just given at the same time. And then it's it should prevent a load of them from coming because yeah, everyone knows yeah. it's given at the end. And if it's at the end, then it forces people to sit through the lecture which has pros and cons to it themselves. Cause if they're not actually interested, they're not actually bringing anything to the party. Yeah. But then if they give it at the beginning, then just people getting the credit for something they haven't done. Yeah. Well, one, of my lectures, one of my lectures has taken the approach of saying like, stop asking for the attendance code. Like if you're asking for the attendance code in the middle of a lecture, you're not paying attention to the content. I've had that as well. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's so true. It's like, why are you interested in just an attendance code? You're here to learn and you need to learn to pass the course. So it's, it's just a really strange thing for me. I don't understand. One thing that I, I have found out, um, I'm not, I haven't like fact checked this, but I think the international students have to have uh, their attendance logged as part of the visa requirements. So I think that, might, that might be why some of them are so keen to like, that's possible it. but um but yeah um i just wanted to cover as well that you know the blackboard thing with people writing on the virtual whiteboards uh on that software that's so annoying it's you know, really it, annoying it's really annoying because it, you can't just highlight the whole thing and delete it you have to delete every single line and as you can as the lecturer deletes one someone else can do it and bring it up and bring it up and also you can put your mouse on the screen and people are literally doing like that all over the screen. 
really yeah. distracting because all you can see is this thing moving back and forth back and forth and it i it got it to the point in one of our group chats it was i'm not being funny we're not in year five anymore like grow up and people find it amusing and it's so not <laughs> yeah um bit of context here so blackboard is the learning software that we use um where lecturers deliver sort of like their presentations and stuff and there's an op there's options at the top where you can write text on the slides or you can draw on the slides and people are essentially just scribbling on the slides during lectures and um yeah and it happened it's not happening anymore now for on my courses because one of the lecturers got really annoyed about it but at the start um yeah we had people even at a postgraduate level on an mba course doing the same thing and i don't want to sound like a killjoy like i'm all for having fun but people are paying to learn like you should there's be respectful to other people there's a time and a place to have fun exactly. and a time and a place to have a serious head on yeah and for me so this is my office now it's serious it's time to work I go out that door and then okay I can go to the beach and I can do whatever I want till I have steam but in a lecture is not the time to do that and no. I've never experienced a face-to-face -face lecture like properly like we've done study skills face-to-face -face, but not an actual like marketing lecture or a management lecture so I don't know what people get away with in that situation I can just imagine at least if I'm behind the camera I can turn it off and pull a face and turn it back on again but they, they, <laughs> there are benefits to it, but it's what do they get away with in actual? Because I'm pretty sure if they were talking, someone would tell them to be quiet. I but think they don't have that ability. Yeah, I think um, yeah. people are a lot more cocky because they know it's anonymous and they can get away with it. Um, unlike in a lecture, I think people just aren't brave enough to do things like this and mess around because you can identify who it is that's messing about go like that yeah. and you can see you and there is it. there is to a level on blackboard because the same names pop up at endlessly and they could have had the attendance code like four times and then still post it same for us as well you can start picking out like okay they're the trouble cause they're the trouble cause they're the trouble cause yeah. but there seems to be a lack of accountability and not necessarily just accountability like enforced by the uni of peer learning and like having an intelligent conversation with someone on like breakout groups is i would prefer not to do them because you just end up in a group sat there like okay i've got my mic off is anyone else gonna engage with this at this point yeah uh, to me it's actually easier just to stay in the main room and have an actual conversation with the lecturer than it is to go into a breakout group and try and have a conversation with two people with the mic off yeah, so this, is, this is another recurring theme across undergraduate and postgraduate like online study. Um, so in Blackboard, uh, you can put people into breakout rooms essentially to do group work. So it splits the class down into certain size groups. And a lot of the time you get students who, th this is what you're, you're referring to, isn't it? You get students yeah. who will just not speak or like bearing in mind we're in like we've got like a week and a half week two nine. weeks left in the semester we're in week nine now so we're quite we're quite a way through yeah. people are still using the excuses that they don't have a working microphone and like the university actually has um a digital hardship fund for for students who are in like a financial situation which means they can't afford these things i'll, I'll actually put the link to that in this video but you can get a 500 pound bursary um to buy like tech but for me i don't i don't buy it as an excuse that people don't have working microphones i just think people uh take an easy option and just not contributing because it doesn't away, like the first week you could possibly get away with it yeah. but it's like i don't know about anyone else i had digital learning before this happened so for example i know that my laptop works and my mic works and I know that my tech works because to me you can't it's like going to a lecture without reading the notes you can't function in a lecture without equipment that works and it's that accountability of you need to do x y and z academically but you also need to have your laptop charged your mic working and it's almost like that should be included in your pre-lecture setup because yeah. without yeah. it you can't engage properly 
but because no lecturer can see it, nobody can enforce it. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a balancing act. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the solution is to this, but I brought this up in a meeting yesterday, and I think there needs to be like a university-wide policy that you have to have a working microphone because when you get put into group work and you don't contribute and you just maybe occasionally say something in text on the chat, you're not only like making your own learning experience like less rich, you're, you're damaging the potential for your peers to learn because yeah. if you're not having these conversations with people, then like me, I had this uh, on uh, in one of my lectures the other day. Like, I'm, I'm, I talk too much probably, but I can't do group work via text. It just doesn't work for me. It's frustrating it and it's so work inefficient. For anybody though. Because uh, yeah. what you're trying to say, you can lose the impact of certain parts of it in text message. Yeah. And I, I hate messengers. I hate them. I hate email. I hate a lot. Just to me, just pick up the phone. Yeah. It, you get to the point where you're like, okay, this needs something and this needs something and this needs something. But whatever you're saying gets influenced by the person's mood and not necessarily on how you're saying it. So you could be trying to say, like, discuss economic terms or an accounting question. And you get to the point where you wonder whether other people are just sat there just drinking a cup of tea being like, she'll do all the work and we'll just take the credit for it after. And yeah, it happens. Yeah. And your yeah, first few weeks, you, the, quite a lot of people leave and they go. But you'd think by now you'd have this group of people that really care. And I swear there's about three or four people that continuously input. I'm yeah, one of yeah. them. I, I don't see the point in sitting there doing nothing. Because if I sat there doing nothing, I'd fall asleep. If I'm engaging with a the lecturer, then I'm at least, my brain's working. But there, there's a certain level that you need to be accountable for your own learning. It may not be in the situation you wanted, but you've got to make the most of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there needs to be a level of support from the university that helps students like me and you who are there working to protect our learning because we're trying our best. We shouldn't be negatively impacted by people that just don't count. Yeah, and, and I totally, I totally agree. I think there needs to be like a university-wide policy on this because it's the university is supposed to provide us with not just a qualification, but an experience, a learning experience that helps us with our future employability. And if you're, if you're not getting the most out of the learning environment, then that's a like detrimentally affecting your your employability skills yeah. and I don't think a lot of people understand this like the people that stay quiet that don't talk I don't think they really understand how damaging it is for their futures because they're losing on out on the chance to like improve their communication skills with their peers it's going yeah. to be much more daunting to do that if you're in a job with like a boss who's in a senior position who's talking down to you. If you can't talk like we're talking to your peers on your course, how are you going to communicate effectively with someone well, in a position of authority? That. And people are like, oh, we'll go back to normal and we'll go and have meetings face to face. But there are so many companies that realised, oh my God, we can spend save so much money by not having an office space in the centre of Manchester. My brother, for example, works for a call centre in Manchester and they're not going back. Yeah. This is going to be the new normal. You better get used to it now because it will be a whole lot more daunting if you're having a conversation with a client and you've never had an engaging conversation with someone over a video platform. It's, yeah, it is yeah. now a life skill, whether we like it or not. And th there are pros and cons to it. For example, I really like working from home. I'm in control of my environment. I can do it at my own speed. And I really enjoy that. Mm. But there is, like, when you get the annoying messages and people aren't being accountable, it is irritating. Yeah. Because even yeah. though you d you've never met me face to face, it's clear that I care. And at this point, you've applied, you've gone through nine weeks, you'd like to think you cared. And I think there's that balance of when do when does someone step in and say, look, are you gonna are you gonna participate now? Uh, I think, I think I, go on, sorry. The last few weeks, lecturers have started name picking. Like, what's the answer? No, nah. what's the an answer? Nah. And it gets really, it gets blatantly up, so they're not listening because you just don't get a response. Yeah. And I'm there like, I know the answer. <laughs> Can I say it now? Um, but th there is a level that there needs to be accountability on an individual level. 
that I don't think is taught at A level, to be fair, because you get spoon fed everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now I think there's a bit, a bit of a wake up call for a lot of people is that you've now you're in control and there's no one telling you if you don't submit something, then nobody really cares. It's See, I, I don't think there has been a wake up call because there's not enough um, messages coming from the university that you have to engage. It's kind of like they've got a very softy, soft approach. Like they don't, um, for me, like there's not enough discipline. Um, I don't think I've heard of anyone no getting discipline. disciplined. What's that? I haven't heard of anyone getting disciplined. I've heard of people being fined in halls. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether it's true or not. Don't really speak to anyone in halls, not in halls. Um, but there isn't, there doesn't seem to be a way of a lecturer pulling up someone for an issue because no, I get it. But at the end of the day, this has been what, nine months now, COVID regulations. There should be a policy in place by now. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Because if it just affected individual learning, I wouldn't care because that's those people just damaging their own sort of like learning learning potential. But when it affects other people, that's when I take an issue with it because it's selfish to not engage because everyone else around you is losing out because of your lack of, well, your lack of care. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there, there's not much of a peak to lecturers try and encourage it and they're like you're pay learning that you'd normally get we're trying we're trying we're trying and there's only so much that the lecturers can try before individuals need to be held accountable for engaging in that and I try and communication isn't my strong suit anyway I try my best and I'm a lot better than I was but there needs to be a two-way conversation I can't just come talk into a screen by myself like it, it doesn't work yeah, and yeah. That there's fundamental flaws with that, and that I think there are some changes that if I was in control of Blackboard, that I would be making over Christmas. Give us uh, them changes. What are you mass, saying? Master mute, lecturer can mute everybody, especially if someone's refusing to turn the mic off. I don't think let students should be able to draw on the slides. I don't think that should be an option. And I actually think there should be a way to mute certain people on the message boards that it pinging it up constantly especially for the attendance code because it gets old and it gets annoying and I think there needs to be a way for a lecturer to go nobody needs to be notified when that goes up there needs to be a moderation of and I'm, I'm sure if you can go through I'm sure you can put a filter on if attendance code is mentioned just don't put it out yeah that would be a good everyone's idea. life so yeah. much easier yeah so we wouldn't see it and the lecturer wouldn't see it, and then the lecturer's not focused on that, and we're not having to listen to it, and then the code's given out when the lecturer is ready. It makes more sense. Yeah, but that's yeah. me being uber logical, and it probably won't happen. So, the first two, um, that they are a thing that can be done. Um, it's just, uh, I, I think it's a communication issue and an IT, because what you've got to remember is, um, like we're just using these platforms. Um, we're just learning from them. The lecturers have to know how to use them and it's like new for them. So um, there is a way where you can have like control so no one else can do anything on Blackboard. Like, so you can mute everyone and you can stop them drawing on the slides. But I don't think the information on how to do that has been disseminated throughout all of the like sort of like lecturer space, whatever it is. You can, can tell that it. some lecturers are really capable with Blackboard and you can tell that some aren't. And I don't think the support is necessarily there for the lecturers that aren't comfortable with it. And that's sad because like we can email IT support, but they don't they don't seem to be getting support to a degree. And it's not necessarily all the issues are reliant on us as students. There's a lack of support for lecturers as well. And I think that there just needs to be like even if it was an email or a video for someone to make, I'm sure it would only take someone like 10 minutes. This is how you do X. Like we get for the library, you can find this by doing X, Y, and Z. And I think that would help eliminate loads of the issues that we already have. And it is just sheer information giving out to other people. And I'm sure there's someone that's capable of making a video and send, sending it around the lecturers, I'm sure. 
Yeah, so I, I, I was having a conversation with one of my lecturers the other day um, about this very issue, and um, they told me that they'd like found a way how to do it, and they passed that information on. But I, I, I said like, make sure this goes to whatever information sharing hub you lecturers have, because every lecturer needs to know this because it's a common theme, yeah. like people messing around, like during lectures and. Sometimes it's accidental. So I'll just give you an example um, that one of my lecturers told uh, me at the start, which could have been why there was some people scribbling. So different students getting used to the technology or like mm -hmm. scrolling, trying to make the slides go through, you know, like when the lecturers oh, have the slides yeah. up and they've not realized that they've clicked on the draw button and they're trying to scroll through the slides, which you can't do, but they're trying to yeah. do it. And they're yeah. just drawing, they're drawing on the slides. But I think um little issues like that uh, should be it, by now though. Yeah, yeah. That for us it has been, like I say, but um that this lecturer also said like you can understand that if there's some like yeah. lines as if someone's scrolling, but then people will be yeah. drawing like smiley faces and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I've like, had one issue really? when I was left on my icon. And it was purely accidental. But the lecturer didn't care because my mum's an accountant. So me and we were in an accountant lecture and I was really confused. And my mum was like, okay, you need to sort this and do this. And that's where you've gone wrong. Yeah. It was like, it's actually really informative because it heard a different format of how to do it and it helped people. I didn't mean to leave my mic on. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like, and then she was like, are you talking to me? And I was like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, no. Around accidents, but there should be few and far between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What other, what other sort of like issues have you have you got that you can think of off the top of your head? Uh, I think there needs to be a standard with the pre. Do you get pre-recorded lectures? Yeah, yeah, we do. Some of them are really good, and they they acknowledge like you, not always at home can you sit for two hours constantly yeah. without being accountable for a lecture and that to me you like you've got a two-hour lecture and a two-hour pre-record lecture sometimes released less than 24 hours in advance it's not long mm -hmm. enough and then we've got some lecturers that have handled it really well like we get three pre-records a week but they're in between like 10 to 25 minutes and that's quite manageable and i think there needs to be like these modules have worked really well. How can we implement this on modules that are struggling with implementing virtual learning more? And I think there needs to be quite a few conversations between module leaders. It's like, I've got three modules that work great. And three, I sit there, I enjoy the material, but it's harder to engage with the lecturer. And I think there could, I enjoy the at-home learning, do not get me wrong, I love it. I mean, I don't have to drive to Bangor every day. I can stay at home and I can work, but you've got some modules that you can engage with and you've got questions and you get feedback on the questions and it, it's engaging. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum where like you can't even send like a critique anonymously, like, look your blackboard site is such a mess nobody can find anything like gets to the point where you like can we just put this anonymously and for some lectures they're great they have anonymous feedback boxes and things actually change and those are the sort of lectures that i think needs implementing is that we should be able to have a voice without feeling like we need to name and shame ourselves yeah that's a great idea by the way the anonymous feedback boxes because some people will be scared to Mainly put their self in a name on an email. Yeah, so and I think I've, that would help. I've not seen this. Um, how does that work? How so we have it. There's, um, it's like an MS Forms, I think it's with, and it's yeah. just a link and it's completely on risk. What is it? It basically says, what do you think we can do to improve or how can we make this better? And you can put it in anonymously at any point in time. And I've done it when you've not been able to see the slides because a video of the lecturers covered them and they found a way to move it so you can see both separate like we're seeing now. And there are things that do change. And I think that would make students 
like feel like they've got a voice a little bit more. Yeah. No, that's a great that I, I'm gonna take that to um to a higher level and try and get that implemented because I think that's really important having yeah. that platform for people to provide anonymous feedback. You will get people that use it for well, you're taking, always taking the mickey advantage, advantage of yeah like, but get someone that says just not have to do the lecture or something yeah but well, that silly. that's a great way of gathering feedback that you wouldn't necessarily get normally so because you get that. multiple choice at the half semester and the end of the semester multiple choice versus actual live feedback throughout the semester that can change it immediately is a lot more i'd say helpful for the lecture and helpful for the students yeah that's so I, I think that would be really helpful to implement over the Christmas break, definitely. 100%. I think that's a really important thing that you've touched on there. It's important to have feedback coming in all of the time, because if you only get it at set periods, you can only make changes during those set periods. If you've got like live feedback, you can make changes like instantly. Like if, if kids can't see, well not kids, but students can't see a quarter of the screen, that means resolving now, now, not yeah. in six months from now. And I think that would generally be beneficial and it would let people have, like me and you, have a voice. I mean, I don't mind. I'll put my name to anything if I want it changing. Yeah. But there are people that are shy and don't want to say. And I think it would eliminate that kind of people like me and you trying to put a voice forward. And it's seeming like it's just us saying it as it wouldn't feel like that if there was a way of putting it things forward to, on a anonymous, individual, subject-specific basis. I think it would be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. No, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a fantastic idea. Um, and I'll, I'll push that. I'll try and get that implemented where I can. But, that, yeah, that needs, that needs to be something that happens university-wide as well. That's, yeah. That, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because one of the things that um, it's easy to sort of get caught up in is like how, for me, I hate the online learning environment. I know it works for some people, but I'm a very sort of like person person. I like to be I think um, it works. around people. I think it works and it doesn't. It's like I've got friends that are on nursing and they haven't been in and they thrive. The reason why they've gone into nursing is they thrive with human to human contact and they've not got it yeah. they're like i'm going crazy in the house and it's like for me there are benefits to being in a face-to-face -face learning it's like yeah. if i don't have socializing put in my face that i need to do it i wouldn't do it i'll just sit out with the dog I, I really i really wouldn't do it and as if i was at college last year i had to be social because there was there if i sat there on my phone it would be really rude yeah and there, there is to a level, that level of socialization has gone away. And um, there is ways with like the breakout groups and things to have that. And I think in the second semester, if we could all like come together as students who are working from home and want to support each other, it would bring that socialization part kind of into fruition a lot more. And then I think for me, it'd be a perfect experience because I get to be in my comfort bubble of home. Yeah but I still get to socially interact with people on a, on a level that I'm comfortable with. As you've got the other end that are just like, just get me into somewhere where I can see people again. <laughs> there are two ends of it. And I think to a level, I don't see this going away anytime soon. Yeah. See, one of the biggest issues I have with online is, is kind of what we've talked about where people like, if you're in person and you're doing group work face to face, even if it's socially distanced, like I'm quite good at getting people out of their own shell. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've got a, like a way with people where I can, I can get them engaged. I can get them involved. I can ask the right questions I can get people working together. Yeah, but there online, is to a degree, there's a, um, to a degree of trying to judge someone's body language and how they're feeling. And yeah. it is harder over the internet. Well, and also like, if you're in that group setting, you can't just run away in person, but online, you can just you can click move. a button, mic off, video off. Speak off, and that's it. Chill out. 
there's no there's no accountability yeah and you can't do that in person which is it's for called, me it's what it's i call the revolution of the keyboard warrior so yeah. people put anonymous feedback in places and like i wouldn't say this face to face but i'm gonna now and it's like oh i've got this piece of equipment i can there's a screen up and to me for peer learning that screen needs to be taken away and i think that I don't think that'll ever happen completely, but I think there should be a level of mandatory engagement or not even mandatory, like willingness to engage. I think it has to be mandatory because people just won't do it if there isn't um, if there isn't an incentive because we we can see that now. It's at the yeah. end of the first semester and people yeah. are still just not engaging. I've I've got friends at other universities and one of my friends is doing medicine at Liverpool and she said to me that they have to engage in a certain amount of discussion and their entire engagement is monitored. Yeah. And if their engagement drops, not hers hasn't, but friends have, and they've been written, be given written warnings. Yeah. And why can't that, why can't something similar and be like a personal tutor can see if your engagement's dropped off a cliff? Oh. A, for a welfare thing, is everything okay? But on the other end is, come on, if you're at, you need to buckle down if you're going to get this assessment and you're going to pass this course, you've got, that. there needs to be that buffer put in place that will not only help the uni's pass rates, but will also help students like us who already engage and it'll help improve our experiences more. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, see, I, th I think there's like, I think the university is not taking it seriously enough as well, because like you've just mentioned there, this lack of engagement and social interaction around like peer to peer learning, essentially, is going to have a massive impact on people's grades, like massive, um, because a lot of the time um, I've found in the past when I've been doing like courses and stuff, there might be something that you're not quite sure of. And when you've got someone like next to you who's willing to talk, you can be like, all right, mate, so the same thing. Bit with this. And then they can clarify it. And the same will happen for them. And you can clarify it together. Yeah. It's I harder don't... to do that now. I don't know harder. whether you ever went. Do you know, have you ever been on a Business Wales course? No. Their courses when when you could go were great because like you break out into groups and you, it's not just a networking experience but you kind of feed ideas off each other and it is kind of one of those things that can't happen because COVID this, COVID that, COVID the yeah. other and I think there needs to be a level of you may not see each other face to face but you still need to network there is a life after uni after all I mean, I'm quite lucky because I've been around business people for years, my mum, and I, I know how to circulate myself. And I don't really use LinkedIn, I should, but I don't. Um, and there needs to be this realisation. And I think it's how I function is that I see, I plan everything to a T, so I see myself in three years' time. And I want that networking experience. And right now, it's really hard to get it, but it's not hard in a fact that it's not happening it's just not everybody's engaging and it's, it is purely down to student engagement and personal accountability and to a level everyone's got to be accountable for themselves but the university could put something in place there definitely it, i think it has to because letting people take responsibility for themselves just hasn't worked so far and this was yeah. the point i was trying to make in a meeting yesterday um like students by now especially at a postgraduate level you would think we're here to like get the most out of it but it seems that a lot of people are just coasting and doing the bare minimum that they can do but it's 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 going to affect their grades and then and, and their employability and i just think that message needs to be drummed home a bit harder rather than taking a softer approach because the soft approach has not worked at all so far like not not at all because engagement has probably dropped off. It's not in, it's not well, stayed the same. The, it's, the it's reason the, the reason uni won't see that is they'll see the attendance codes and everybody's registering, mm. but are they actually engaging in the lecture? And if you ask the lecturers, they can pick three names out of a hat that engage every week. The same every week, yeah. and they'll know who they are. 
because guaranteed they'll have an email in their box once a week from that person. And they'll be able to tell you, well, no, engagement's not that great because look, it's three to 65. Like there needs to be, oh, we've got great attendance codes. No, let's drill a little deeper into that. Let's ask accounting, let's ask economics, let's ask marketing who is constantly engaged. And there needs to be a level of reward for that because you evidently, well, you do get the rewards, you get the higher grades. But I think there needs to be a level of the lecturers can actually say, well, I'm getting engagement of X, Y, and Z, but not of the rest kind of thing. Yeah, this, this could potentially be something that, like, especially in the online environment, that they could build into, like, um, assessment rubric marking, like, frameworks isn't it like an engagement yeah. thing um which i've heard of that before where attendance yeah. is taken into effect in an exam you could have a bad day in exam but you've done the work yeah but there is to a level that engagement should be used as i mean we have course assignments like i know that's continuous assessment why can't your attendance and engagement be involved in that because that's a really important part of learning at university, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. A really important part. No, I totally, um, I totally agree with you there. And and I did, I did bring this up yesterday, but the, they were kind of like, I can, I can, like reluctant to say anything too deep into it because I think it's quite a complex thing to to push out but I, I said to them like it needs to be a university level policy you can't just have like the odd lecturer doing it it needs to be university wide but it's something that I've got on my radar and I will be chasing it up because I think it's very important and I don't I think one of the main issues I think people aren't engaging is because they haven't been told by the university as how important it is to be able to develop the skills associated with communicating with like people you're working with essentially yeah and it's there, vital. There, there's blinkers on there's blinkers of yeah. oh covid's gonna end by march oh well what if people discover this is financially more viable this is going to be an option forever you better get used to it you're in a sheltered environment where the only person i mean it may affect other people's learning but it majorly affect you get like there needs to be a thing of look we're looking towards the future video chat zoom skype whatever else platform there are these days i don't know these are the communication pathways of now it's like social media 10 years ago it is now a major part of everyday life this is going to be major you better get used to it and yeah, i think that, yeah. that is you've got to be held accountable for your own future and can't this to a level you can't blame anybody else now down to you and, and that's, that's a really really important point there a really important point um i think i think we'll we'll probably look at ending soon but what what would you say are the key takeaways from this conversation we've had like what do you think people need to start doing more what changes do you think need to be made now changes now is informing lecturers on how blackboard collaborate works properly and how they can stop things from happening that's a major one and on a student level there needs to be a level of information look this this is here to stay you may as well get used to it now and i mean that's quite a blunt way of putting it but it, it's true and the, there's to a level of information of office buildings are closing like that environment's going away this is the new normal we're trying to prepare you for it now we're not just doing it for the sake of it for sure um i just want to i just want to like get some points across as well and um, that kind of reflect what we've talked about for any students that have watched this video um stop asking for attendance codes 24 7 because sure. it's really distracting for students and lecturers and you should really be focusing on um focusing on the content that's being delivered also like take some take some responsibility for your learning and your peers learning and um engage like don't lie about not having a working microphone because most of you people that are saying you haven't got a microphone that works you're lying like it's 
everyone has like a microphone on the laptop or their iPad and it costs a few pounds for a headset from um, Amazon or eBay, like just buy one. And there's the and digital going... hardship fund, which I'll link in this video if you if you are struggling financially. Um, it might be daunting if you're sort of like a more introverted person to to get involved, but you don't have to have your camera on. You can just talk. And unless you work on the things that you're not confident with, you'll never be you'll never be good at them. Like un unless you work on them and embrace them, you will never get any better. So you can't grow inside your comfort zone. You've got to step out of it. Exactly. Exactly. Like push yourselves, get involved with the conversation. You'll be amazed how much more you'll learn and how much the things you may think people will think are stupid, aren't stupid. And everyone else is just thinking them like, just get, get it out there, speak, get your voice heard and, and build some confidence with your communication skills because I've spoken to a lot of employers and I've got, um, I've got some videos in the pipeline which are going to specifically focus on the importance of communication and collaboration uh, in terms of employability. If you can't communicate um, and you go into like job interviews and things like that, the people who are confident communicators are going to beat you hands down every day in a job interview. I mean, so a job interview that. is really settled within five seconds of you working through the door. Yeah. How you communicate with the receptionists and things. That your communication skills are on examine when you walk in the door is not just when you're sat in front of someone exactly um, there, there there is a huge thing of oh you've got a degree great but can you hold a professional conversation with someone and be etiquettely led yeah it's not just all about the qualification it's no good having all this knowledge in your brain and not being able to do anything with it you need to be able to communicate your ideas and you need to be able to work with other people to implement those ideas in the best way around the situation that you're in. Um, and if you can't work with other people and communicate with other people, you'll never do well in, in, a, in like any organization. You might luckily get a job, but you won't do well. Like you if you can't try. communicate, you will not do well. I guarantee that. So push yourselves out of your comfort zones here. Like this goes to students, lecturers, anyone who watches this video. And, and communicate, share your ideas and try and get other people, try and encourage other people to share their ideas with you as well. Um, yeah, that's, for me, that is so important. And I think a lot of the time people just don't understand how important it is. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do a video specifically focusing cool. on this. But yeah, um, I think maybe, maybe we should end it there. I just want to say, like, thank you very much for coming to talk to me, Rebecca. Um, You're welcome. We're, we're on the same page, I think, me and you, when it comes yeah, to I all think, of this. Yeah, I think through this conversation, it's like, it's like talking to me, me in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, you've like, keep keep working hard, keep doing what you're doing and keep raising these issues all the time. I'm, I'm, yeah. It'd be good to have another chat again, maybe after Christmas in semester yeah. two, just to see where sure. we are. Cool. Right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please share it around the student population because it's very important that students yeah. understand these Definitely. topics covered. Right, thank you very much. Have a lovely thank day. You. See you then. See ya.